Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about permissions on documents, and we're going to talk a little bit about why it may be important for you to permission your documents. Um, we're going to see what kind of permissions come out of the box for documents and teams, and then how you might want to change those if you need those permissions to be more granular. Okay, so I'm going to let's start out by talking about um, scenarios. This is pretty important for things like sensitive data. So uh, one of the things, one of the features that was just released before the recording of this video was guest access, meaning that now you can invite anybody with a legit email address, anybody in the universe, pretty much to a team to collaborate, whether it's a public team or a private team. And um, so that opens up a lot of opportunity for more collaboration, uh, but it also means that now you have people you may not know as well in your team viewing all of the information in there, um, including all the conversations and of course all the documents. And an important thing to know is that right now with the default permissions, guests and members have the same read-write privileges for documents. So there is no special permission structure for guests out of the box. And you may want to change that. You may have certain documents that you don't want your guests to either read or be able to write to. So one of the things that Teams will have in the future, as of the recording of this video, it is not a feature yet offered by Microsoft. Um, and it is not clear exactly when this is going to be released is private channels. Private channels would allow you to actually restrict access to certain tick channels within your team. So if I was to look at this uh, demo team I set up for this video, um, I have a channel for external collaboration where my team and guests would collaborate on things and I've set up an internal collaboration channel uh, just for collaboration within my team. Now, if private channels were here as a feature, and maybe when you're watching this video, it is now here, but um, if it were here at the time of this recording, what I would do is I would make this internal collaboration team uh, channel uh, just restricted to the people on my team and exclude guests from it. And then they wouldn't be able to see anything within this channel. Um, since I can't do that right now, uh, the one thing I can do is at least restrict access to the documents. Um, and so here under this files area, I might have certain documents that I don't want my guests to be able to see or write to, things like that. And um, if I do things the right way, I should be able to restrict their access to those things. Um, now, one of the acronyms we hear a lot in the university is HIPAA and FERPA. Um, and those are laws pertaining to patient privacy. And if you have HIPAA and FERPA data that you're managing, um, chances are it could be in some kind of document, a Word doc or an Excel file or something like that. And there may be a reason to put those documents in Teams. Um, that is a good example of the kind of data that you may want to really restrict access to. Um, so only the right people within your team can, can get a you know, look at those documents and things. So that's sort of an example of the kind of data that you might want to protect. Um, so let's get into it and show how we might do that. So in a previous video, um, what we did was we created a special document library in the SharePoint site that sits behind this team um, where we would be able to change permissions and versions and other settings on this document library and then mapped it here to this files area within the internal collaboration channel. And the reason we did that was because one thing we don't want to do is change the properties on the documents library that houses all the documents for all my channels within my team. Um, because chances are, uh, well, you just don't want to mess with that. Um, because if, if any, any changes you make, it's going to make changes to every single document within your team. And that's typically not what you want to do. You want to 
have a subset of documents that are treated extra special. And so you create an extra special document library to house them, and then you map that document library to your files area. Okay, so we already saw how to do that. So here is my special document library, document management team version docs that I've mapped already. So I'm gonna go into that doc, into that doc library, and I'm gonna say open in SharePoint. And so here I am in my version documents document library. I'm gonna to go to site contents, which shows me all the documents across this site and recall that the documents for all of our channels and everything in our team lives in this folder. And that's the one I said we don't wanna really change much on. Here's the one I created version documents specifically for our special documents that need special treatment. And then this is where I'm gonna do all the settings for permissions. So if we take a look at version documents right now, and we look at settings, and then we go to permissions for this document library, we're gonna see the permissions it has by default. And these are the same permissions that every document library in Teams and every document has. And if you've not seen a screen like this before in SharePoint, what we're looking at here is what we know about this document library is first of all it's inheriting permissions from its parent so the root is where you set permissions and then and where team sets its default permissions and then everything you create within this team inherits those unless you tell it not to so for right now my special document library i created is inheriting from the parent and the parent says that we have three groups uh, of permissions. Groups are just a way to uh, put specific privileges in a bucket and then put people in those buckets. So that rather than managing permissions on individuals, we're uh, managing permissions on groups of individuals. And so my groups are team members, owners, and visitors. And this is actually a little misleading. Um, so the team owners group is the team owners. Anybody designated as an owner of your team, this is where their permissions are set for documents. And um, so they're gonna have full control, which means they can read and write all documents and they can also manage permissions, they can manage settings on documents, they can do everything that the system allows for document management. Team members have edit permissions, which means they have read and write permissions. So they can create documents and edit existing documents, delete documents, pretty much everything to do with working with a specific document. The team members group actually also contains your guests. So guests from a document standpoint have the same privileges as the members of your team. That means they can also create documents and read and write and all of those things. The team visitors group is only relevant, it's pretty much a useless group, if your team is private. It's only relevant if your team is public. So a visitor is not the same thing as a guest. Guests, from a document standpoint, um, are members. Visitors are people who stumble upon your group and are just kind of perusing your team. Um, and this is only going to happen if your team is public. So think of it as the same idea as uh, a visitor to a website. You know, it's basically anybody that has the ability to look at your team. Since our team is private, we don't have any visitors. Um, we only have guests, members, and owners. So this group is useless for us. And then if you have a, a public team, that changes and you might want to say for people who just who've stumbled upon your team um, and discovered your team, you may want to restrict their ability to read documents. Um, but like I said, only relevant if the, the team is public. So we're going to ignore this group right now and just focus on owners and members. 
And so really this is already not structured for the way I, I want things because I want a group specifically for guests, right? And people who have guest access. So we're gonna look at how to kind of restructure this so that it gives us the permission structure that we want. 